guys, are you looking to complete your college applications and wondering how to approach those super short essays? Maybe it's 50 words, maybe it's 100 words, maybe it's 35 words, but whatever the short length in this video, I'm gonna talk you through how to approach these kinds of topics and hopefully help you be one step closer to getting into your dream college. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Brooke. I'm an independent college consultant. I've been doing this for over a decade and a half. I have students every year who get into Ivy League and top ranked schools like Stanford, Harvard, Yale, Princeton. But I also teach SAT and ACT prep. I've coached students to perfect scores on both exams. And you can check out our online course at supertutortv.com. It's helped quite a few students improve their scores. So definitely check that out. I've written a couple of books for the ACT math section. You can find those on amazon.com and follow us on social. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's totally free and we will help you in your college journey. So join us. All right, I'm gonna give you four quick tips and then I'm gonna give you some examples from the Stanford application, one from the Yale application, and a couple from MIT. Cool? Cool. And just because I'm going over those schools doesn't mean those are the only schools that you can apply these kind of tips to. They're the kind of tips that can apply to many schools. So pay attention and listen up if you've got any essays that are between say 35 and 100 words. What do you wanna do with them? Here's what you wanna do. Number one, write it long and cut in half. One of the things that often trips up students is that you guys think, oh, I don't have any room to write what I actually wanna write, so I'm gonna write something really crappy. And then that's what you do. Instead, my best advice is write long and cut it down. If you need 35 words, write 70 words if you need it, and then like figure out which words you can do without, right? And how to cut it down. Now, this doesn't mean write in bad grammar. It does mean that sometimes you don't have to write in complete sentences, but still, you don't wanna sound like you don't know English. If you're an international student, it's particularly important that you keep the thes and the us and the articles in there, or we're gonna think that your English skills are lacking. So just be careful on how you cut words, but do cut it down, write long, cut it down. Awesome. Number two, second tip is every essay should focus on a main idea. It should have some sort of central theme or idea that really magnetizes it all together into a memorable little piece. Every essay should have a takeaway. It should have the central idea that when I read it, I know what your point is and I get it. Biggest mistakes that students often make on this is they're kind of so all over the place that I don't even know what to take away from it, right? They have so little space that they just mentioned so many ideas that it's hard to wrap my brain around like, what's the big idea in terms of what you're writing about? When people read your application, they maybe give you eight minutes of their life to try to see whether you should get into this particular university. That's not a lot of time, and these people don't have time to read and reread to try to figure out what your theme is or what's important to you and why, okay? They need it to be bite-sized, a little nugget that they can take away, easily see, catch, and go, ah, this kid is loyal, and he's super curious about entomology, right? Those are his two things. My third tip is have an agenda. When you write these short essays, the purpose of your college application as a whole and every little tiny essay is to tell the school something about you that they don't already know. A lot of you come to these essays and think, I just have to answer the question. <laughs> That's not the point, right? Stanford, for example, is gonna ask you, what did you do for your last two summers? The point of this is not just to regurgitate what you already put on your activities list and then just rewrite them here because they happen to take place during the summer. This is not just a quiz question. This is an opportunity for you to share a bite-sized piece of your life to say, when I have time and I can do whatever I want, how do I manifest my sense of exploratory excitement and make something happen? How do I pursue what it is that fascinates me, right? You wanna go deeper, you wanna have a message, you wanna have an agenda. What can that agenda be? That could be your sense of humor, right? You could crack a joke. It could be your sense of wit. You could be really clever, right? You can show your good writing ability. You can show your ability to write interesting sentences that flow nicely and that have good vocabulary. You can show your ability to see in metaphor. You can reveal your passion for something intellectual. Whatever it is, you need to have an agenda with every little tiny essay and those little tiny essays should be having different agendas from each other. So your agenda should not be, show them that I'm a caring person 17 times, right? You have each little thing is going to show something a little bit different about you. And then number four, my last tip here, and this is maybe the most important one if you're applying to super competitive universities, and if you're applying to just normal state schools, don't stay up too late worrying about this one, but find your zing, as I like to say. When an essay zings, it's like it's got a little bit of a like punchline to it. And you know how a joke has a punchline where it's like, ah, uh, but um, right? 
and there's something funny or there's something clever or whatever that comes out, that's how your essay should be. And I don't mean that they all have to be funny or they all have to be jokes, but they all should have some kind of a punchline where it, it hits you in some way where you go, huh, oh, wow, mmm, right? You want to like get that Oprah response, right? Where she's like, mmm, yeah, mmm, -hmm, right? You know how people, when you hear something, you're like, oh, like that's the kind of thing that you want your audience to feel. You want them to go, wow. Any of that kind of stuff, that's what I call zing. And these super short essays are like a number one place to make sure that you have some zing if you're trying to get into a top school. And again, this is really more specific for really competitive programs, but it will help you anywhere, by the way. But it's kind of more essential if you're applying to a top school. All right, so now I'm going to get into some example kind of prompts that some schools have and give you some examples for how you might approach it. First, what is the most significant challenge that society faces today? You've got to think a lot of people are answering this question. And again, the right answer is not just the literal answer. It's not just global warming, ha. Huh? Or, you know, the social dilemma. We all live in two different spheres of information and that's tearing our country apart. Saying it that way is like very obvious. And did I learn anything from that? Did I get to a zing? Did I get to an aha? No, I did not. It doesn't mean you can't talk about either of those things, but the way that you talk about them has to show something about you, has to have a little bit of zing or has to have some insight, right? So how do you get zing? Where does it come from? I'll give you one example. I could talk about one challenge that society faces today is that nobody is to blame for any of the problems that we face because we are all, you know, perfect in our own eyes. And how does that play out? Well, that plays out, like take racism, for example. We passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and we thought we'd eliminated racism. Fast forward 56 years later, racism still happening. What the heck, right? Like that's a problem that we think we solved it and we still have it. And nobody wants to take the blame. And like, how do we, how do we solve a problem that nobody knows quite exactly how it happens or where it comes from, or it's so, you know, insidious that we can't put our finger on it. So that's an example of a way that you could approach this question that's interesting or that's different. Because this is the thing when it's the most significant challenge, like I said, if you just put global warming, guess how many people put global warming? And that's great and it's probably true, but the point of this question is not to actually identify it. It's to hear your voice. And again, that's the have an agenda. Make sure you have an agenda that you put your voice into this. What's your point of view? How do you see the world that's going to help us unlock and solve that problem? Okay, next one. What historical moment or event do you wish you could have witnessed? Again, do not just tell me Martin Luther King, I had a dream speech. That would be awesome. Fighting for equality. That's a really nice moment. You know how many kids are going to say it? A lot. And so if you're telling me this, there's a few things that you can do with this essay to really like convey something. And what can your agenda be? Sometimes your agenda can be to share something cool and interesting that the audience has never heard before. Remember that zing idea of like, huh, I never thought of that, or whoa, I didn't know that, right? This is an opportunity to teach us something. Tell us about a historical moment we've never heard of before that's really kind of interesting that interests you. And reveal to us, take us with you, why does it interest you and why should it interest us, right? That's a way to get a little zing. Tell us something we didn't know about or we haven't heard about. Don't just tell me something that I've heard before. Okay, another one, briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities. So this one, again, you need to have an agenda and have a main idea, right? What's the idea that you wanna convey about your cross country team? Is it community? Is it teamwork, right? Write an essay where you tell a little tiny story and you cut into the core of a value that's important to you or why cross country matters to you or whatever it is. I don't wanna walk away and see the same kind of material that I see when we have your general activities. Cool? Cool. And then finally, name one thing you were looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. This could be like sincerity can go a long way. And again, what is this going to convey about you? If you're looking forward to it, it says something about you. The point of this is not just to prove that you read the Stanford course catalog or that you know the name of one professor. Remember, you want to show me something about you other than I know how to look up your website. I've seen that. I can see through it. Do better. All right, I'm going to move on and talk about a Yale prompt. One of my favorites is you are teaching a Yale course. What is it called? My advice for this one 
is go research how courses are actually called things, right? Go look up Yale actual courses and see how they're named. And then look up Stanford courses and Harvard courses and University of Chicago courses and find out how do they word them in ways that sound interesting and what kind of ideas and what kind of questions do they ask? And then iterate your own that is different from all the ones that you see, but that is in the same kind of vernacular and that fits into that kind of, you know, world, right? Or mindset or how they name these things, right? Okay, I'm gonna click over to MIT. And sometimes we even have more serious essays that are short. And that's what this next one is. Although you may not know what you wanna major in, which department or program at MIT appeals to you and why? Biggest mistake that students make with this is the why. Often you guys give me the why as happenstance. Just because you did an internship in something doesn't mean that you have a passion for it. Why is the question that should get at the heart of what motivates you and what makes it fascinating and interesting. And I want you to share that fascination, not just by telling me you're fascinated, but by explaining why you're fascinated so that I think, gosh, maybe I should have majored in what you're planning to major in because it sounds really fun and interesting. Make sense? Take us with you. That's my bottom line. So that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Good luck with your applications. Let us know how it goes in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.